need to be sure of the church that you're in, what's appropriate to the tradition. You want to know what the musicians are that you're going to be working with. Different instruments have different strong points, different churches have different traditions. The first music they hear will most likely be the prelude music. And here, my advice again is to trust the, the taste of the musician you're working with. The music you might have planned in your dreams for a, a lovely wedding with a nice quiet thing might turn into a completely inappropriate choice when 14 people show up with two-year-olds. It's really not that magical anymore to have background music. You might be more in the mood to let them have some significant silence till they're gathered, and then when the organ or other instruments start, it's likely to have some significance. I'd advise waiting until it's almost time for the bride's mother to come in. For my taste, I would have the bride and groom coming in together. And for whatever you do, don't have them slam a door in the bride's face before she walks in. Two different trumpet tunes. One of these is the, the Prince of Denmark march. Another one also is a, this trumpet tune. has a nice feel of uh, welcoming, it's broad, it has a sense of the occasion. It's not music that you're likely to hear at a football game or at a karaoke club. A small orchestral ensemble, a, small, a string quartet can be wonderful. Those pieces that I just played there with the addition of a trumpeter are magic. Additional musicians usually have to be contracted separately and you can make that arrangement with the organist and the other musicians. It depends on how the clergy are running the rehearsal, but what you do want to have a meeting with her or him, just just the three of you or the four or five, whoever involved in that. So uh, you arrange an appointment to meet probably at the church, if it's going to be with an organ especially. Get it settled, write it down. In the Roman tradition, quite often the, the couple will be walking to uh, an altar for Our Lady, and in fact in the, in the Anglican church too, sometimes so actually go to the Lady Chapel and leave flowers or light a candle or something, and what better thing than to sing an Ave Maria. Also, it's certainly appropriate during communion. Once the wedding party is left, then the congregation leaves behind them, and if it's a piece that continues for five or 10 minutes, that's great. Maybe three years ago, somebody asked me to play the Mendelssohn one. That's the... Um somebody else's church and I said okay we'll do it I'll wear a fake mustache and, and play the thing and I have to admit that it actually was a lot of fun although some churches specifically and I believe this one might have it written into the contract that those two pieces of music are not to be played <laughs> the Wagner I just don't see any excuse for it What I would want at my wedding, I wouldn't advise those as a general rule. There's better music. You turn around to face your adoring family and friends, and this is what comes out. so on. It's just a treat. It's fun. It gives your congregation something fun to talk over as they're on their way out. It's, it's just a, it's a good one. In this church, it's small enough that by the time I've finished, say, a piece like that, people are pretty much finished. So the bride and groom usually get carted off to a sacristy or someplace to sign the documents, and then they get carried back in and, um, and pictures are taken. So the last thing you want to have going on while people are milling around getting ready to take pictures as uh, you know the, the prima donna at the organist at the organ <laughs> 
carrying forth as if anybody still cares.